Hello everybody, in this video we are going to take a look at limits in calculus. We are going to start from the absolute basics and work our way up to this question over here, which was a question on my Calc 1 midterm in first year of engineering. So let's start with the absolute basics of what a limit is. So before we take a look at this question, let me first show you exactly what a limit is. And let's take a look at this graphically. Let's say that you are asked, and this is a common question, let's say you are asked, what is the limit of a function f of x as x approaches the value of 3? So let me show you exactly what is meant by this when this question is asked. Let's say that if we were to graph this f of x function, that it would look like this. There are three things that we have to know to find what limit f of x is. So here are the three things that we have to know to find this. Okay, first of all, what is the limit of the function f of x as x approaches 3? And there's a little minus sign here, and this minus sign means from the left. So right here is where the value of 3 is. So what limit f of x as x approaches 3 means, that means as we approach the value of 3 from the left, what value does the function have? So this is the first thing that we have to know. So in this case, it looks like it's about 2. So we could say that this is equal to about 2. Okay. The second thing that we have to know if we're trying to find what is the limit of the function x as x approaches 3 is what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 and we have a plus here and this plus means from the right so similarly to here we'll take a look at the function from the right side of 3 as the function approaches this value of x equals 3, what is the value of the function? And again, we'll say that this value is roughly 2. And the third thing that we have to know to find what is the limit of the function f of x as x approaches 3 is are 1 and 2 equal? So does 1 equal 2. If both of these have the same value, if the limit of the function as x approaches 3 from the left and as x approaches 3 from the right are the same, so over here we'll say if yes, if that is the case, then the limit of the function as x approaches 3 does exist. And not only does it exist, but it is equal to that value. So in this case, limit of the function f of x as x approaches 3 is equal to the limit of the function as x approaches 3 from the left. And it is also equal to the limit of the function as x approaches 3 from the right. Now, what if these two are different values? If the limit of the function from the left is not the same as the limit of the function from the right, then the limit does not exist. So this is all that you're doing when you're asked to find the limit of a function as x approaches some value. You take a look at what is the value of the function as x approaches that value from the left, and you see what is the value of the function as x approaches that value from the right. So in this example, we can see that the limit of the function is the same from the left and from the right. So let's do another example where that is not the case. So let's imagine instead that we have a function that looks like this. It goes through the y-axis at 4, it drops down up until it reaches x equals 3, and then from x equals 3 it jumps back up 
and then it continues across horizontally like that. So let's do this. Find what is the limit of this function. Let's call this function g of x as x approaches 3. What is this value if it exists? Okay, so let's do the first step. What is the limit of the function g of x as x approaches 3 from the left? What is this value? Okay, so let's go from the left. As we come towards 3, what value do we approach? The function approaches a value of around 2 when x is equal to 3. So this is equal to 2 because as the function approaches an x value of 3 from the left, the function, approach, the function approaches a value of 2. Okay, so what's the second thing that we have to find? There are three things that we have to find. So the second thing that we have to find is what is the limit of the function g of x as x approaches 3 from the right? So what is this value? Let's start from the right and let's move towards an x value of 3. So what value does this approach? So here's our x value of 3. And as we move towards x is equal to 3, we could see that the function value here is equal to 3. Okay, so what's the third thing that we have to check when solving for the limit of the function as x approaches 3? Well, we have to check if these two values are equal. If these two values are equal, then that's what the limit value is. If these two values are not equal, then this limit does not exist. And since we see over here that 2 does not equal 3, so the limit does not exist. Let's do one more example before we take a look at the midterm question. So what is the limit of the function 1 divided by x minus 2 as x approaches a value of 2? So we can see right away by looking at this what happens if we put in a value of 2 into this function. Well, we get 1 divided by 0. So does that mean that this that this limit is going to be infinity? Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Right now, we don't know. Remember, there are three things that we have to find. We have to find what is the value of this function as x approaches 2 from the left, what is the value of this function as x approaches 2 from the right, and are those two things equal? So let's start with number one. So what is the limit of 1 divided by x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left. For something like this, I'd recommend making a table. So with the table, we could have in one column x values, and in the second column, we could have the function values. So we are approaching a value of 2 from the left. So if we have a number line like this, where this is x and we have 0, 1, 2. So if we're approaching from the left, then we'll have values like 0, 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.9, 1 1.99, 1 1.999, and so on. This gets closer and closer to 2, but all of these numbers are lower than 2. So let's see, what values do we get in this function if we plug in these values for x? So if we put in a value of 0, then we're going to get 1 divided by 0 minus 2, so that will be minus 0 0.5. If we put in a value of 1 into this function, then we'll get 1 divided by 1 minus 2, so that will be minus 1. If we put in a value of 1.5, we get 1 divided by 1.5 minus 2, which is minus 2. If we put in 1.9, what do we get? We get 1 divided by 1.9 minus 2. That ends up becoming minus 10. And we can see that these numbers are getting bigger and bigger, but negative. So let's see, if we put in 1.99 into x, what do we get? We get 1 divided by 1.99 minus 2. That is minus 100. If we put in this value into the function, we're going to get minus 1,000. And we can see that as we 
keep getting closer and closer to 2, this value ends up becoming larger and larger. So as we approach an x value of 2 from the left, it looks like this value is going to keep becoming a larger and larger negative number. So we can say that the limit of the limit of 1 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left is equal to minus infinity. Okay, so what's the second thing that we need to find the limit of this function as x approaches 2? So we found what the limit of the function as x approaches 2 from the left is. So now let's find what is the limit of this function, 1 over x minus 2, as x approaches 2 from the right. So again, we could make this same table again. We have x and we have the value of the function. So now, let's take a look at our number line again. This time, we're approaching the value of 2 from the right. So we're going to have values larger than 2. So we'll, we could start off with a value of 3. And these values will start to get closer and closer to 2. So then we could have 2.1. 2.01, 2.0001, So let's see what values we get as we plug in these x values into the function. So if we put in a value of 3 into this function, we get 1 divided by 1. So this is positive 1. If we put in a value of 2.1, we get 1 divided by 2.1 minus 2 that ends up becoming 10. If we put in this value into the function, we end up getting 100. If we put in this value into the function, we end up getting 1,000. And the closer and closer that we get to 2, while still above 2, the larger this function is going to be. So we could see that this case is the opposite of this previous case. So the limit of the function as x approaches 2 from the left was negative infinity. But we can see over here that the limit of the function 1 divided by x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the right is going to be positive infinity. So now that we've solved both of these, now that we know what the limit of the function as x approaches 2 from the left is, and we know what the limit of the function as x approaches 2 from the right is, now we can solve for the final step, which is what is the limit of the function 1 divided by x minus 2 as x approaches a value of 2. So do we have a value for this or no? Well, both of these are different values. These are not the same values. So for this, we know that the limit does not exist. And the limit does not exist because the limit of the function from the left and from the right are different. Okay, so hopefully this was a good introductory explanation or hopefully refresher on how limits work, how to find the limit of a function. And now that we've taken a look at that, let's look at this midterm exam question on how to find the limit of a function and if the limit does exist. So let's see, let's solve this question here. So it says consider the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by absolute of x minus 1. So the question is asking find the limit of the function as x approaches 1 if it exists and if the limit does not exist explain why. And part B asks to sketch the function. So we can do that also. So over here, in question, in question A here, it says, if the limit does not exist, explain why. So we already know what the explanation is if this isn't the case. So if the limit does not exist, explain why. So what is the case in which the limit of a function does not exist? Well, remember from down here. Does the limit of the function as x approaches the value from the left 
equal the limit of the function as x approaches the value from the right. If they're not equal, then the limit does not exist. So let's get right to solving this question. Okay, so our function here is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by absolute function x minus 1. And we can simplify this. Maybe this will make it a little bit easier. We can break up this numerator into x minus 1 times x minus 2. So if we could see that if we expand this out, this ends up becoming x squared minus x minus 2x plus 2. So this is the same thing as the numerator here. And in the denominator, we have absolute function x minus 1. So we want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 1. So what are the three things that we have to find? So first of all, we want to find what is the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left. Second, we want to find what is the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right. And thirdly, we want to find does 1 equal 2? Is the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left the same as the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right? If they're the same, then that's what the limit is. If they're different, then the limit does not exist. So let's start with number 1. So let's solve for number 1 first. What is the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left? So we know that our function is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 2 divided by the absolute value of x minus 1. Now let's take a look at this absolute value of x minus 1 because there's something that we can do with this. So how can we graph this function x minus 1? What does this look like? Okay, so we know, uh, let's graph f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 here. Let's see if there's anything useful that we could get out of this. So when we put in a value of x equals 1 into this function, which is over here, we're going to have a value of 0. Okay, when we put in a value of 2, what are we going to get? 2 minus 1 is 1, and make that positive, so that's 1. If we put in a value of 3, what do we get? We get a value of 2. If we put in 4, we get a value of 3. If we put in 5, we get a value of 4. Well, let me extend this out this way a little bit. Okay, what if we put in a value of 0 into this function? Well, it'll be negative 1, and that becomes positive because of absolute. So at 0, we get a value of 1. With minus 1, we get minus 1, minus 1. That's minus 2. So that ends up becoming positive 2. Okay, if we put in minus 2 into the value of x, then we end up getting positive 3. So the function ends up looking like this. And we can see that these are two straight lines. And we can represent this as a piecewise function. We can say that this function here, x minus 1, is equal to, we can see that this part of the function is just equal to x minus 1. Because if we put in a value of 1, we get 0. If we put in a value of 2, we get 1. If we put in a value of 3, we get 2. So we can say that this function, absolute value of x minus 1, is equal to x minus 1 if x is greater than 1. And what about if it's less than 1? Well, we can see that this is a downward sloping line. So we know that this is minus x plus 1. And let's check this out. If we put in a value of 1, we get 0. If we put in a value of 0, we get 1. If we put in a value of minus 1, we get 2. So this, this function that we've created here, this minus x plus 1, this captures this part of the absolute value of x minus 1. So this is true if x is less than 1. So 
Back to over here, when we're taking a look at the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left, what does x approaches 1 from the left mean? Which of these categories are we in? Are we in the category of x is greater than 1 or x is less than 1? Well, we're approaching x from the left, so that means that these numbers are all going to be less than 1. So this absolute value of x minus 1 in this case can be replaced with minus x plus 1. So let's do that. So let's say the function in this case that we're taking a look at is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 2 divided by minus x plus 1. And you might notice that this is starting to look very similar to one of the terms in the numerator here. We could just factor out a negative 1 here and this function becomes x minus 1 times x minus 2 divided by negative x minus 1. So this function ends up simplifying to just negative x minus 2. And now this is something that we could very easily find the limit of. So let's see, what is the limit of the function negative x minus 2 as x approaches 1 from the left? We could create a table with values again where we could say x and f of x and then we could put in values slightly less than 1. We could put in 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999 and see what all these values are. But in this specific case, we could just put in the value of 1 directly and see what it is. So this ends up becoming negative 1 minus 2 which just ends up becoming negative, negative 1, which is 1. So we found the answer to the first part here. So the limit of the function f of x as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to positive 1. So this is the answer. Let me get a better circle there. So this is the answer to the first part of the question. So we found what the limit of the function is as x approaches 1 from the left. So this has now been found. So let's find the second thing that we need now, which is the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right. Okay, so let's do that over here. So number 2, what we need is the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right. Okay, so remember, so our function ended up simplifying to, last time, it was x minus 1 times x minus 2 divided by the absolute value of x minus 1. Now remember, last time, this absolute value of x minus 1, we replaced that with negative x plus 1. Can we do the same thing in this case? Well, we're not going to do the same thing in this case because take a look at this. Remember what we did over here with the absolute value of x function here. So when we did this first part, we were taking a look as x approached 1 from the left. So x approaching 1 from the left that means that this case was true when we're looking at the limit of the function from the left. But now, what we're taking a look at is the limit of the function from the right. So x approaching 1 from the right, does that mean that these numbers are going to be larger than 1 or smaller than 1? That means that these numbers, these x values, are going to be slightly larger than 1. So now, we are going to be in the case of x is greater than 1. So if x is greater than 1, then we can replace the absolute value of x minus 1 with x minus 1. So let's do that right here. Wherever we see absolute value of x minus 1, we can simply replace that with x minus 1 because these values are greater than 1. So the function ends up becoming x minus 1 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 1. And now, these x minus 1 terms are exactly the same. So we could simply cross those out. And the function value is simply x minus 2. Now, this is very easy to solve for. Let's find 
what is the limit of x minus 2 as x approaches 1 from the right. So again, we can create a table. We can say, what is the value of x? What is the value of the function? We could have values slightly greater than 1, and they start to approach 1. We could get 1.00000001, and then we could see what value we get here. And what we're going to get as a result of that, we're going to see that this ends up becoming negative 1. So we have now solved this second thing that we need. We have solved the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right. So now we know what the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left is. We know what it is from the right. So the third thing that we have to do is check is the value from the left and from the right the same. And in this case, what's the answer? Well, from the left, the value was 1. From the right, the value was negative 1. So these are not equal to each other. So we can say 3, the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left does not equal the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right. Therefore, the limit of the function as x approaches 1 does not exist. So this is the final answer to the first part of the question here that asks, find the limit, limit of the function as x approaches 1 if it exists. If the limit does not exist, explain why. So we have solved this. This limit does not exist because the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left is not the same as the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the right. So this is the answer to part A of the question. So let's solve part B of the question now, which is sketch the graph of f of x. And this is going to be easy to do because we've partially solved this. We partially found out what we have to do in our solution already. So let's do that. So sketch the graph of f of x. So let's do that down here. Okay, so this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, here's zero, then let's do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is part B of the question, and in part B of the question, we have to graph the function. So let's take a look at if anything that we've solved will be able to help us graph the function, because by just looking at this on its own, this might not be very intuitive to be able to draw right away just by just by looking at it. We could see that there's an x squared minus an x plus some value here and it's divided by the absolute value of something. But remember what we did in part A of this solution, we found what we, we basically made a piecewise function out of this absolute value function. So we found that for the value where x is greater than 1, we know that that function is equal to x minus 1, and where x is less than 1, then it is going to be equal to minus x plus 1. So we know that if x is greater than 1, what is the function equal to? Well, we solved for this, right, over here. So when x approaches 1 from the right, that is when x is greater than 1. And the function ends up simplifying to x minus 2. So in this case, we could say the function is equal to x minus 2. And what about if x is less than 1, then what is the function value? Well, we know in that case, we found that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, the function ends up simplifying to negative x minus 2. So that's negative x minus 2. So let's put in some values and let's see what we get. So we can make a table here where this is x and this is the function. Okay, so let's put in a value of, let's say, negative 1. Okay, so if we put in a value of negative 1, is this greater than 1 or less than 1? This is obviously less than 1, so we'll use this function. 
So negative one minus two, negative three, negative of that. The function has a value of three when x is equal to negative one. So at x is equal to negative one, we have a function value of three, okay? What about zero? If we put in a zero here, we get negative, negative two, so that is positive two, okay? What if we put in a value of just below one? Let's say we put in a value of 0 0.99999. Well, we're going to get a value of, oh, and I forgot to put this two here. Over here, we're going to get a value of just over one, depending on how many nines there are here. So we can go over here, we could leave a circle here because this is a gap, because this isn't an actual point, but as you approach this value, you'll end up getting closer to this value. As x approaches one from the left, you end up approaching a value of one. Let's put in some values that are slightly higher than one. So what do we get if we put in a value of three? If we put a value of three into the function, we're now using this function because x is greater than one. So three minus two is equal to one. So at three, we have a value of one. What if we put in a value of two? We're going to get zero. What if we put in a value that is just slightly to the right of one here? If we put in 1.0000001. Well, we're going to end up getting minus 0 0.9999999, a value that's really close to negative one. So as this function approaches one from the right, we approach a value of negative one over here. So this function is going to end up looking like this. And this, of course, will continue on this way. And this, of course, will continue on this way. So that is the answer to part B of this question. This is what it would look like if this function were to be graphed. So hopefully this tutorial was useful to you. This is a full solution to this midterm exam question here. It's not a very difficult question. And if this helped you, well, good luck on your upcoming midterms. Hopefully you could share this with somebody if you think that it might help them. If this has been helpful to you, you could let me know if it's helpful, if there's some other content that you would like to see, or if there's something that you are having difficulty with, you could let me know. Maybe I can make a video about that topic. So I hope to see you in another video and take care.